All right, so let's jump into it, shall we? We've got uh, it's our second time playing this more aggressively slanted variation of Mardu, Mardu, red, red, black pyromancer. Uh, pyromancer in this case refers to young pyromancer, a card that was introduced to historic via jumpstart. So whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a one-one red elemental creature token. This card pairs very well with another great Jumpstart Edition, Innocent Blood. One mana, each player sacrifices a creature. So Young Pyromancer really allows you to kind of break the parity on this card in a clean way. Innocent Blood also pairs well with things like Claim the Firstborn to take our opponent's creatures. This deck has a variety of powerful one mana instants and sorceries to flash back with Dreadhorde Arcanist here. And then the one thing that really kind of separates this build that we're playing here today from some of the other ones that have been going around and seeing success is that we're leaning on Knight of the Ebon Legion as well as Dreadhorde Butcher here as additional threats that we're playing as opposed to playing other graveyard-centric cards like Croxa. So we still have graveyard elements in Archfiend's Vessel and Claim Fame and Dreadhorde Arcanus, but this builds a little bit less all-in on the graveyard plan and it tends to um, start attacking sooner with threats like these as opposed to trying to generate more value with Croxa. So this build, in my experience, is better against uh, the control decks and the ramp decks, so I think are both pretty popular and historic right now. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games here with this and see how it goes. Windowhead, thank you for the year and a half of support and the very generous tier three sub. Welcome back. Howdy, howdy, happy Blur's Day. Yeah, the big red deck, sweet. I gotta I actually got banners for both the big red deck and uh, this deck. I'm gonna put them, put them up on the historic section of the website uh, when time permits. Morning, slamming. Howdy, Doctor Mister. Easy mulligan here with only one land, but it being a tap land especially. Uh, not super exciting, but definitely a keep at six. Howdy spank. Thanks for 16 months. Welcome back. Uh, that was something they added a little, a little bit ago, Red. Was that, was that a good draw, chat? I think that might have been a good draw. So I would like to claim this firstborn. I would like to attack you for six. I would like to perform some village raids. Jumpstart basics are sweet. Well, poop. Hey, Jerry, glad you're enjoying it. This, this card, and you know, various pieces of graveyard hate is a big part of why um, I like this build with fewer, um, with fewer graveyard-centric pieces. Like, obviously this still feels bad to play against here, but at least we don't have like Croxes and stuff that are also getting stranded. A little unfortunate that we've drawn a bunch of our graveyard-centric things here. We'll have to see, find a uh, cut to ribbons, ideally. Two, I think just two, Llama Copter. Two so far. Did I start early today? I started a touch early. I've been live for about four minutes. Uh, sorry, I've been playing for five minutes. We've been live for ten.
the average block to tweet ratio. The average is probably pretty low. That that being said, like I could tell I could tell you I know when I'm sending something that's likely to increase that ratio. It's pretty easy to know. Something too, people talking about uh, notifications. If you're not in the subs discord, turning on notifications there is a good way to get notified when I'm streaming stuff. I am the only one with at everyone power on that server and I don't even use that when I go live. Generally, generally speaking, uh, there are roles in the server you can join that get tagged when I go live or when I change games. So like, for example, if you're someone that's interested in my rune terror segments or my uh, variety segments, those get tagged separately in there, which is great. All right, so definitely, I think I'm just sacking this, right? I'm gonna start by attacking, I'm gonna start by attacking. I mean, these games do have variants, Crazy Duck. Uh, someone sent a donation for Morrowind, but no, I, I already had a copy of that. Morrowind. Morrowind is a game I spent much of my childhood on. Every game, though. Yeah, it's not every game. It's definitely, definitely not every game. Neither, neither Magic nor Runeterra is it every game. Imagine this Knight of the Ebon Legion is a crux of this game, huh? I'm a little bit behind the Scavenging Ooze still, but this is going to stabilize the board, and then hopefully we can find uh, another Innocent Blood to clean these out. Or, uh, claim, claim the first board also lets us do the men, right? Claim, claim or second blood. Whew! That's... That's a good top deck. Yikes. Diversity. Diversity is our greatest strength. Vivian confirmed, not a Republican. Your prediction about magic boomers yelling at clouds over flip cards came true quickly. Yeah, they're predictable. Changes, changes new and scary. They just need one good turn of this casting creature off the top of their deck for us to lose. I brought friends. Lots of Instant speed cultivate just got spoiled. Please tell me that's an exaggeration. Provide, provide a link. Links, links as always are appreciated. So, Dreadhorde Butcher comes out in these creature-based matchups. You're definitely looking to be a little bit more interactive and run the opponent down, bringing in a bunch of creature removal. Uh, is this an a braid matchup? They could have Great Henge, I suppose, so maybe this isn't a braid matchup. I think I'm going to trim a couple of these Claim Fames, so I have slightly less graveyard, graveyard leanings. I think that's the plan. Uh, nah, that isn't, that isn't Cultivate. So Cultivate creates card advantage, right? That's, that's turning two cards into two cards. Yeah, Haro, Haro is the, for the, for the OGs in the audience, Haro is the better comparison. Wait, that's like exactly Haro, right? As an additional cost, sacrifice the spell. Oh, it's not an additional cost. Okay, so this one, you don't lose the land if it gets countered. So is that is that strictly better, Haro? 
is that magic player pedantic give me oh haro's untapped okay haro's untapped got it got it haro haro gets them untapped there we go <laughs> i was worried we had a strictly better there for a minute good catch and they are a great hinge deck sick um I think I just take Skavengli Ooze, right? Mm, I'm just supposed to Dreadhorn Arcanus there. I think my opponent's having fun. Do you think they're I think this is something they're enjoying? Yeah, I am Wallaby. So I won't so the way uh, my deck system works is I won't take specific deck submissions until there's a full spoiler, but yeah, build around submissions for standard and historic are open. Submit submit away. Let's get down to business. Do 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 do. That's a pretty good one, I guess. Maybe. They need to draw a creature next turn, right? If they draw a creature next turn, this could be very good. So let's do this. And then let's cast this, because I've still got an Innocent Blood in the bin. If this is a brick, this is not a creature, this game should mostly be done. Pretty sure I'm not thought seizing them. I guess I could have a great henge. If I thought seize them and draw a card with castle, I could level up my Knight of the Ebon Legion here. I mean, it's it's likely to be a land, right? I've endured worse. But like, now I get to do this. Well, that sounds fine. It's garbage time. You don't have to go home, but you can't play here do, 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 do. do i want pillar of flame probably especially on the draw this kills uh land war dork yeah shout out shout outs to the opponent for acknowledging garbage time packing it up packing it in I'm gonna kind of land on the draw because I'm greedy. I'm naive, but I was legitimately surprised to... Okay, here's a hot take that is not directed at anyone in general, but you can feel free to think about whoever you'd like it to apply to. A lot of people who are scared every time a potential change comes to magic are because for a long time magic's been an incredibly gated community that you have to have an incredible amount of privilege to get into the door to so a lot of people have been big fish in small ponds and they fear that as the game becomes more accessible they could be they could become more relevant 
as the game widens its appeal to more players. They're worried about being left in the dark. Left in the dust. I think we see, see a lot of that in general, too, with the people that, like, try and, like, call short or whatever you want to call it. The accomplishments of people, like, in the arena era, so to speak. The real Omar, thank you for the 12 months of support. Let's get your sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. So I gotta decide, I th think... I think I'm just putting Luris in hand here. I'm putting Luris in hand, like I've got a couple traits. I could put Luris in hand, I could play Pyromancer plus a tap land, I could hold up Bedevil for the questing beast. There's a chance I want to Bedevil this Great Henge though too. I think I like just playing Young Pyromancer here. How am I supposed to maintain my dominant position in modern if everyone else can afford optimal databases? Yeah, yeah, this line means that village rights or uh, innocent blood are both incredibly good draws here. If they attack with the Barkhide Troll, I'm going to block with Arcfiend Vessel. I'm going to kill this now. So that way they can't play this for five mana next turn. I think I like trading here because they're technically one mana off. They're one mana off of playing the Great Henge, right? And I think I prioritize getting Dreadhorde Arcanist into play over um, over getting Luris here because I would like to Thought Seize this Henge before they're able to cast it. All right. It's garbage time. You don't have to go home, but you can't play here. Do -do 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 -do. This card's so absurd. Can you guess claim with Arcanist or only fame? Neither if it only has one power. But it's three power, you can cast either. Good, good start to the morning. This archetype, this archetype's very good. And like I said, so we've had we've had some stinkers in our historic in our historic decks recently. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit more selective about the decks I take. I can I, I understand the base of this format a little bit better now that uh, since Field's been banned, so I can reject decks a little bit, a bit more education, get a little bit quality gameplay on average. No longer the brew queue. I mean, eh. Magic, magic's been kind of hostile to brewing for a while now. And and honestly, part of the reason why I liked Field of the Dead was because Field of the Dead made the format easier to brew in because it's much easier for the average brew to attack Field than it is for it to attack a lot of the other things that go on. Yeah, and like, and like there are novel, novel things you can't do still, right? Like the big red deck we played yesterday, for example, is a good, a good example of something that's like fine and competitive right now. Uh, I think the treasure flare deck is super novel and it's actually reasonably competitive. I'm going to thought seize Dread Butcher here, I think.
So next turn, they'll take five, and these things will be seven power worth of dorks. Oh, they're going to jump block. Got it. Don't ritual my soot. Don't, uh, don't, 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 uh, extinction event me. Okay. Just like, just like we drew it up. I already, I already got a banner for it, Ivy. I'm definitely, definitely putting this on the website. So, claim the firstborn, not good here against control. Innocent blood, kind of mediocre. But devil is great. Extra dreadhorde butcher is good. Uh, dresses are good. Pretty clean in and out. Want to leave cut to ribbons because it kills nickel bolas. So I have bedevils and cut to kill bolas, which I think is plenty. He's seeing Arc Fiend was actually just lethal, right? I don't know. I didn't count. I don't, I don't know if there was a wrong way to eat that Reese's. My opponent's concession seems to agree. Yeah, you're right, right? Arc Fiend hasted is three. They block a three. They take ten. It was lethal regardless, right? Like, my line was also lethal. Because, like, they have to block a Dreadhorde Butcher, and then they're taking three or five from the trigger. Yeah, both lines were lethal. My line. Actually, my line was strictly optimal because it involved not showing my opponent a very valuable piece of information that I am playing Arc Fiend Vessel. So clearly, my line was superior because it did not bleed information over. Thank you, Twitch chat. Aaron, thank you for the year and a half of support. I appreciate the tier three. Welcome back. Hang on, hang on, I'm happy with this. Let's click submit. It's possible all the duresses against the Nicol Bolas deck is not ideal, but... How much for an entire stream in the comic book guy persona? Gosh, I don't know. I could probably give you a number for a league. The price the price difference between a league and an entire stream is probably very different. Alright, so I have to decide how I want to approach this game i think the axis i wish to fight on is card advantage i think like we're not set up like last game where we can grind our opponent out so i think my my angle here to try and win is generating card advantage so i think i'm going to just pass here and then next turn, I can go land Pyromancer, Thoughtseize, take their Nickel Bolas. Obviously, they're going to get to kill my Pyromancer, but I'll have generated a token that way. Anarchy Preacher, thank you for the quarter of a year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So basically just looking to keep my opponent's threats clear here and prevent them from generating card advantage and will run them out while they one on me. So my plan here is to take Nicol Bolas. Dragon God. Um, I think it's just that. So when they potentially... There's, there's still two lands off of casting this one. There's only one land off of casting this.
could be wrong to hold up village raids here. They're pretty unlikely to kill my token. Well, they could they could have a sweeper, right? For people that are saying this is garbage time already, they could definitely have a sweeper. And I'm okay trading these two here because, like, if they trade these, it means that my Pyromancer gets a window to start attacking. They have an extinction event. Is that why they're not blocking? They're going to plan to exile this. Magic's fun. I enjoy magic. Hey, thanks for the 23 months. Be your guard. I appreciate it. Welcome back. It's fine. We're still, like, they angered us. We're still not just dead. When they didn't block the Dreadhorde Butcher, I mean, I, I, Extinction Event was the card I was thinking of, which is why I played the Archfiend's Vessel out. Anger is pretty punishing. And again, like, you're just picking and choosing which removal you can play around and which ones you can't. And, like, this is... it. Things like that are one of the many reasons why... Uh, open deck list tournaments are just way more skill testing than, like, stuff like this, right? Like, we just don't get as blown out if we, like, know what we're playing around. Whereas, like, here, you can't really play around anything, right? Because there's, like, six different sweepers they could have. So you, like, flip a coin and pick ones at random and decide what you're going to beat and what you're going to get blown out by. You got him. Pretty sure I want to do this as opposed to Lurusing this turn because I would like to Thought Seize my opponent. I don't think I can beat this card resolving, so I'm going to take it away from them. I think your assessment's bad, Mr. Maple Syrup. You're also you're also missing the fact that Bedevil hits artifacts, which I think is really important. Yeah, definitely, Vicarian. Man, uh, there's a ton of dual lands in this format. I think if they let me attack with this, I'm going to sacrifice it to village rights and draw two. You got it. It's dead, Jim. All right, so now now they're literally on empty, and I have Luris, Dreadhorde, and a handful of cards, so in a pretty reasonable spot here. Hey. I, think, I think our archetype's probably like the lone mid-range deck that's super competitive in this format. And even then, like, this build that we're playing really saw some of the strength that Dreadhorde Butcher brings to this archetype in that first game, especially against the Grixis deck. I think Dreadhorde Butcher is pretty key to being able to beat the control decks with this archetype consistently. Yeah, seems pretty good. 
does the stuff. Opponent is playing uh, Wellspring, which generally speaking is mono red, and this hand's actually pretty good against mono red. Innocent Blood and Archfiend's Vessel are both, both great, very resource efficient cards, and our, we don't take damage from our lands, which is excellent. This is, this is why Innocent Blood is good, by the way. Right, right here. You can't play cards from different regions. Yeah, Runeterra has a deck building restriction, Seb. You can only have two regions in your deck at any given time. So the, the deck building restrictions in Runeterra are, you can have two regions, up to three of an individual card, and up to six total champions in your deck. Would not be surprised if this eats a, uh, this eats a Wizard's Lightning here. That's also fine. We've got Claim to bring it back. Being a filthy net decker is great. The smartest the smartest people play other people's decks until they really understand what's going on. I didn't really start building my own rune chair decks until I've been playing for like a month plus. I'm not blocking here because I don't want this to die to a stomp. If they want to kill this, they're gonna to need to use a three damage spell. One of the nice things about them having Wellspring as their companion here, we know we don't have to play around Goblin Chain Whirler because of its companion cost. How you delete a deck in Rune Yeah, click the collection tab and then click on the deck and there's a delete button on the right side. They have Pillar of Flame. That's a good one. I don't think I'm blocking here. I could give this 5-5 five five haste here, but I think I'd rather get the get the token. Pillar of Flame is the name of your dad's dirt rock band that plays poison covers on the weekend. Well, okay, yeah, that was a good, it's a good one to hit with Thoughtsies, huh? Crunch. I believe the spell side is the front on all of the lands. All of the uh, land split cards is my understanding. Uh, if I fame this, they're dead next turn. So I think I just like give up getting value here and just like gain five and hit them for 10. Dreadhorde Butcher comes out uh, against anything that's blocking you, especially on the draw. Uh, bringing in all the Doom Blades, basically. Definitely leaving Claim Fame because they're killing a lot of my stuff. Cutting Thought Seize because they're a burn deck. I don't think this is a duress matchup.
Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of rules update with uh, those types of cards to like allow you to put them in with Growth Spiral or Uro, for example, but we won't know until we see the rules update. It's worth noting that if we explicitly, oh yeah, Kling's good. It's worth noting that if we explicitly do not see a rules update that um, Explore lets you put in these lands extra while um, Growth Spiral does not. I need three cuts here. I have too many cards for this matchup. Let's do that. I like cutting a land of the draw. Can we get a command made about the land double face cards? Because people are going to be coming in halfway through and asking that question a lot while we're talking about them. They, they will still ask, we'll just be able to do exclamation point command instead of me having to verbally respond to them. Is the, is the goal, chat? So I don't, we don't create commands because we expect people to stop asking. We create commands because people are guaranteed to continue asking and I would like to not verbally respond to them. So... With Claim the Firstborn, Grim Love Master can kill itself if I exile two cards from my bin. It's kind of fun. I think I'm doing that. Just like using this as Doomblade. We'll drop Vessel here. So we can claim it back next turn, hopefully. If they have a Pillar of Flame here, obviously, they can, uh, Exile Vessel, which wouldn't be ideal, but then, like, Knight or Young Pyromancer aren't eating a Pillow, so that's still probably a net positive for us. Hmm, should have blocked the prowess one. It's a mistake. Yeah, links are always appreciated to card Cesar. I don't, 
I don't recall ever interacting with Watch Matt on Twitter, but they have me blocked. Love, love Wizards of the Coast employees. Definitely, definitely make me feel welcome as a content creator. People, people can and should manage their social media however they want, but definitely do not, do not feel welcome making content for their game. Is Mr. 3000. I think I'm double blocking these here. I mean I can I can see the tweet chat. Like I'm not an I'm not an idiot. Like Blocking people on Twitter just means they can't respond to your post. You can still see their stuff. You just like open it in a browser that's you just open it in a browser that's you're not logged in in. Am I holding this to gain three life? I feel like I am. I'm just getting back. Am I getting back right now? I'm gonna get back Knight. Knight lets me hold up Kling to gain life, and this can threaten to get really big. I think if I'm only getting one thing back from Lurus, potentially, I'd rather it be Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's not true, Gasney. Cedar Rapids issued a mass mandate last night. Except my employer still thinks that six feet inadequate and the mandate isn't really a law that we have to follow. Uh, America. I'm just pumping this up. I feel like I'm pretty unlikely to get six tier and I want to start getting counters on this. So they're at 12. Um, I think I just want to do this now so they can't, like, kill me in response. Maybe I'm supposed to theme there. Really matter. This deck's pretty sweet. Feels feels good. fine if they're a creature deck it's really good if they're like a hollowed fountain deck we probably just die though double double innocent blood claim and again this is just like one of the risks you kind of run playing an archetype like what we're playing sometimes you're going to run into interactive decks that you don't line up well against Oh, 
Looks like, uh, looks like the Mono Black God Pharaoh's gift deck here. Oh my god, I just clicked on the wrong one. Oh, this is a free- I'm gonna take a mulligan. We just hit a rank floor. I clicked on the wrong one. I'm gonna- I'm gonna mulligan the match. You get a- you get a free loss when you hit, uh... When you hit a plateau. So it's not- it's not a complete rank floor. If we lose the next one, we'll go back down, but... When you hit, like, plat 2, plat 3, you get one match loss. So, I had intended to take the 1-1 one, one there, not the 2-1, because I wanted the dice trigger on it, as opposed to filling their graveyard more, but it is what it is. I mean, I had to, like, listen really closely, but I swear to God that the audio on this board is louder than the audio on the other boards. Do I want to play into a potential sweeper here? I think so. I'm gonna get, like, a really good hit in, right? Because I get to do this on here... I'll have to, like, check the recording tape, but I think it's, like, like not even just the game board is louder, but, like, the actual sound effects are louder. Like, the card action sounds are louder. Alright, so claim the firstborn's great here. Dreadhorde Butcher's great here. They're playing Sultai Ramp for people that didn't see it before they conceded. Uh, cut. So they can hit, you can hit view battlefield here. Not that you can see their cards, because I can't, I can't mouse over them. And there's this game ticking down bar over here. But there's a Hydroid Crisis, Anissa, and Lands here. For those that can kind of partly see it. It's probably an okay Bedevil matchup. I think that's probably marginally better than Innocent Blood. Bring in like a duress, I think. Again, seeing some of the benefit of having an aggressive card like Knight of the Ebon Legion in our deck to run people down. Hey, Hawabaji, thank you for the three quarters of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Just keeping me around. Knight and his Dreadhorde Butcher. Let's do it. Thought season a Dreadhorde Butcher. Thought season a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Elder Gargoth makes me think I probably want more Innocent Bloods in my deck.
Do I village rights this? Probably not. Uh, their hand is Ugin, and their graveyard is Uro plus five cards. This lets them Uro. Did the music just like completely stop? That's so jarring. Like what, what happened? It was like really loud. <laughs> Of course they're still in this because of Uro. You must be new here. Needed, needed to draw a Claim Fame here. I could still draw a Claim Fame, right? Or sorry, uh, Claim the Firstborn. If I draw Claim the Firstborn, I could take Uro and attack and then sack it to Dreadhorn Arcanist. Wow, the music just like a thousand percent completely cut out. Huh, it's like, it's like eerily quiet, chat. It's just eerily quiet. Land, Ugin. Ooh, that trigger ended really quickly, so maybe they don't have the land. The silence is the looming presence of Uga. It feels like it. We're just super dead at this point, right? Yeah, maybe I want some Innocent Bloods. I don't know. We're on the play. Let's just run them down on the play. Yep, Uro doing Uro things is about right. Which five mana bomb? Ah, 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 ah. A good one to get. We shocked plus thought seize, so Knight will get a counter here. The shock yourself thought seize counters on Knight are very delicious.
I mean, like, we're fine here until they draw Ugin or another Hydrate Crisis. We're actually, we're actually ahead at the moment. Yeah, that's why we play, that's why we play this card, just for that, that specific interaction right there. Thanks for the 31 months seeing it. I appreciate it. Welcome back. I think I was wrong when I said we were okay, chat. I think we're just gonna die to the Nissa. Nissa, Nissa making three threes is so much harder for most of these aggro decks to beat than Field of the Dead, in my experience. It's very brutal. I think I have to jump block here so I'm not dead to the Hydrate Crisis next turn. So this kills Nyssa. And then I have Knight of the Ebon Legion to jump block plus eat a land next turn. So we're not we're not dead on board. Glass half full. Glass, glass half full, the auto tamper, the auto tamper means they can't escape her on this turn. <sighs> glass half full, Uro shows up and knocks it over. <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy, right? Like, the volume just, like, took a downturn. Did it get quieter? I'm, I'm pretty sure the audio volume is bugged on that level. Oh, that, that board. It, like... And again, like, not even just the music, right? Like, all the sound effects got quieter. Yeah, hunt thousand, thousand percent. The audio is just what? <laughs> God damn it, magic. <sighs> that is a, uh, that is a keep from our opponent over there. Pushed. It means powerful. It means it's obviously strong with the intention of it seeing play.
we just do this? Uh, I've seen a I've seen opinions on the new Ameria card that range from bulk rare to or bulk mythic to busted unplayable. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it's probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it sounds like the standard hot takes. I'm I'm kind of expecting it to be a format staple. We'll see if that plays out. Feels like it has a lot of good utility. I don't know. I don't know about... I would I would never really call a card like... Once upon a time designs aside, I usually don't declare cards format breaking. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if that card becomes a format staple. In standard and possibly historic as well. I think it looks very reasonable on the surface. Hey, Oratog. Thank you for the 27 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. But I think of Uro when I saw it. I don't remember. I don't think I wrote an article for Theros. It's been a long time since I've done written stuff. I think Eldraine was the last set I did a written article for. It's the part where we just get burned out. Just like zero attacks, just 20 to zero. I guess we technically thought C's right, so it'd be 18 to zero. Please attack. Okay, so Village Rights is a sweet draw because Village Rights lets me sacrifice Knight of the Ebon Legion and sacrificing Knight of the Ebon Legion is important. I need to draw an untapped land that doesn't hurt me and then I get to go Claim Vessel, Fame Vessel. Did not draw an untapped land that doesn't hurt me, so probably going to die. I was hoping... To attack with this with three lifelink this turn was my was my hope. Does not look like that's gonna get to be the case anymore now though. We're just sitting here hoping to fade a burn spell off the top of their deck for a turn or two. Maybe maybe I'm just supposed to play Luris out after I brick there. Very possible. I assume this is going to go upstairs. So we got to fade Shock, Wizard's Lightning, Spectacle. Skewer the critics here. Opponent drew land. Okay, so land means I either get to gain life this turn or force them to point their burn spell at my life linker. And either of those are wins for me. So we do this, which puts fame in our graveyard that we can aftermath back. We'll go ahead and we'll play Archfiend's Vessel here. We'll fame the vessel and we'll get to attack with it. Hey, Stinkins, thanks for the 16 months. Really appreciate that prime support. Welcome to Oglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. So even, even if they opt to Lightning Strike my Life Linker here, at that point, they, they're no longer one burn spell away from killing me. This is what I did last time. I think I like that. Curves nice and trim. Lots of removal.
Snookums, thanks for the 14 months. Welcome back. Hold bolt yourself for an untapped non-basic planes. Okay, so that's the wrong attitude. You're not you're not bolting yourself for just an untapped non-basic planes. You're bolting yourself instead of missing a land drop, or you're just putting a land into play tapped instead of missing a land drop. Like, people are going to play a lot of these cards wrong. They're going to play these cards with the attitude that they're playing them over land. When in reality, you should likely be playing a lot of these cards over spells. So, the downside isn't simply... The downside isn't simply... I think I keep Pillar to kill their one drop, and then I can claim Village Rights, their second creature here. Um, it isn't simply like, okay, I'm doing this to make my land drop. It's like, okay, I'm doing this instead of missing my land drop. I have to pay some life, but I get to actually play a game of magic instead of stumbling and doing nothing. So, Graft Digger's Cage makes me want, um, Graft Digger's Cage makes me want to bring in my Bedevils if we have a game three here. I do have two of Braids in my deck, so we're not just cold to this card. However, it's going to be an uphill climb, especially with the draw that we've had so far. Current draw does not line up well into Graft Digger's Cage. That being said, they're also not doing a whole lot, so we might be fine. I'm gonna play out some Dreadhorde Arcanus. It's like, hey, look at distraction, because like, they almost assuredly have a way to kill this, so I'm not just gonna run it out there naked. I might regret using this as a cantrip instead of a game three. I might. That's one of the reasons why this card is good because it's flexible. It can gain three when you need to gain three. It can also just draw you cards. Might be right to just cash in a village rights here, honestly. Mind me. We have two abrades and forty two cards. Probably losing this game. Pretty flooded. Hey, Boshek. Thanks for the 24 months. Had we been able to utilize our graveyard, we'd have probably been okay here. But opponents drew their hate card. They've only drawn three lands in. Opponents had three lands and 14 cards. We've had, what, seven lands and 19 cards? Eh, it's not too far. Not too far. We're not really flooded. 
Seven lands and 19 cards, probably right around average. Hey, Boshek. Thanks for the two years, by the way. Angry Dino's opponent. Well, now this can't gain life, so let's draw a card. Yeah, the problem is these dinos are very scary. So like, if they attack with both, I have to, I have to double block. This probably incentivizes them to attack, right? Hey chat, did you know I boarded a land out in this matchup? They can attack with their menace creatures, and then Ramonet ruins me next turn. Well, you see, playing Luris deals two damage to me, and I can't currently gain life, so... Is there a pillar on the play? Hey, thanks for a third of a year, Blue Fire. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yes, yeah, fine. Not amazing, but fine. Actually, it's pretty good, right? If they play a one drop on one, I go Innocent Blood, make a 5-5. Five five. I, I like. This hand's busted. Again, I feel like... These are the types of things your mid-range deck needs to be capable of in this format to really be competitive. You need these really just crazy powerful linear draws to be able to lean into on occasion. Having, having really strong linear draws like this lets you make up for the other games you're just going to kind of get hosed out of. They, they literally had a 1-2 in play, Cody. <laughs> they, they they literally, literally had a one-two. Oh, you're saying if they block, I blood, sure. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right, I'm wrong. You're right, you're right, I'm wrong. It didn't matter. My thing didn't need to die to innocent blood. You're correct. If I lose, if I lose by a point, it's on me. Would not be surprised to see them point burn spells at my 5-5 five five here. Soul Scar Mage means that they get to shrink it down, which is very powerful.
think I would rather have Knight of the Ebon Legion than Pyromancer here. Knight's going to turn into a 2-3. Fame lures for lifelink? Nah, I don't think so. I think with the Grim Lava Mancer in play, I want to diversify my threats. I'm still at 12. I want to try and pressure them out of the game. This, this makes them pick between killing my Lurus with Grim Lava Mancer and shrinking my 5-5, five five, and my 5-5 five five is currently lethal. So... If they, if they go after Luris, they need something else in hand to deal with my 5-5. Five five. Which they could have here. Hey, Sphinx. Thanks for the three quarters of the year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So this is a burn spell. This has to be. Or they're, or they're dead on board. Okay. Yeah, it also has to not be a shock, correct? So they don't have attacks here because my knight's a 2-3. And then I force a jump block with the knight attack next turn. We're hoping to draw just any creature here. That's a great creature to draw. So they have to chump trade. And then they're not just dead, but I'm going to 14. I'm in an okay spot. They're going to have food for Grim Lava Mancer, which can kill this, but Knight still, still hanging around. If we can take Soul Scar Mage off the table, it makes my Knight a lot better, which is great. Kane's Indignation. Thanks for the tier 2 resub. I appreciate the 16 months. Welcome back. So I need to fade a three damage burn spell here. If they find uh, Wizards Lightning, Spectacle, or Lightning Strike. They get to kill both of these, and they have these two plus the runes to buy nothing. If this is a brick for the turn, we're in a pretty good spot, because I get to untap with mana to pump knight. That'll, that'll do pig. Oh my god, I just misclicked. They're conceding anyways. Alright, whatever. Whatever. Alright, sure. Thanks. I appreciate you, put it. I was expecting the most created thing to be on the right. From muscle memory. Muscle memory, they're usually on the right, but it, it, it grouped it with the other one. It was for a moment and then it moved. Okay, so I'm not crazy. So it was there and then it and then it shuffled it. Okay. You know, I, I just That's not really great because I already had one. Can you talk about the choice to not include Phyrexian Tower? Yeah, I don't want a colorless land in my mana base. I think if you wanted to include Phyrexian Tower, you'd have to cut a spell, and I think it's worse than all the spells in my deck.
Hey, Sufa. Hmm, collecting company is a reason to maybe, uh, claim last turn. This is my free roll again. Um, there's one thing I'm gonna do to help with my mental and frustration while playing Magic. I'm just gonna concede matches like this that we're pretty, pretty unfavored in. I think our deck really sucks against Mayhem Devil decks, and I'm just not gonna play the matchup. Playing, playing incredibly polarized matchups isn't super fun. Okay, let's get you a sword to go with that shield, Sufa. Thanks for keeping me around. Oh, I just got louder. Is this the Amonkhet board? God, holy crap, it is. <laughs> oh, yep. Man, flipping paper boomers chat. I just had someone respond to me that it wasn't a big deal that we put auto four of cards at Mythic because that's the way it's always been. If it was good enough for my father and my father's father, it damn well is good enough for me. It's just like, yeah, just because we've always done this thing that sucks doesn't mean we should keep doing it. That's the, that's the, if that's the best you got, the only defense, the only defense you can have of something is it's the way we've always done it. The thing you're trying to defend probably sucks. Not even probably. The thing you're trying to defend definitely sucks. Ogok, thank you for the two thirds of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. It's a GOP boomer thing to say. It really is. Well, that's just the way it is. You got to do it that way. Didn't get Nissa. Hashtag glass half full. Okay, so we'll claim that we'll Knight of the Ebon Legion here. And then next turn, we'll claim the firstborn this, Dreadhorde Arcanist, flashback village rates to eat it. How could a card game be good if commons and uncommons are constructed playable? Next, you're going to tell me we don't need loot boxes to acquire cards. By the way, for people who aren't involved in the hellscape that is Twitter, today trending is uh, Ted Cruz alongside Viagra. What is 2020? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not need to know that. Listen, if I have to suffer, so do you. <laughs> 
These truly are the end times. Yep. Alright, so we've got another claim and another village rates here for their Uro. So this is a shark, right? Is it worth throwing this away to thought seize them? I think so. I'm just activating this and then putting Luris in my hand. Ah, yes. Ted Cruz with the ever relegate non medical fact that pregnancy can't be life threatening. Reptiles. Reptiles give birth in a slightly different way than humans do, so he might not be familiar with the normal pregnancy gestation process that humans experience. Leaf Blade Fighter, thanks for the 12 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hey, thank you for the 11 months, Nactyl. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're staying safe out there. Right, our mate. This deck that we're playing is very reasonable. Hit my graphics guide, do up a banner so I can get it added to the website. It's quite, quite excellent. We're going to perform some village rights and put this arrow out to pasture. Opponents at six cards in graveyard here still, because why not? So we're going to get to re-escape Uro next turn. I do at least have some Knights of the Ebon Legion. Knight of the Ebon Legion really punching the clock and going to work. I think if you if you had a discussion about possibly the best one-drops ever printed in Magic, I think this would probably be in the debate. Card's very good. Thanks for the 16 months, Zagwa. I appreciate that. Hey, yeah, Historic's all right. Um, if I'm being completely honest, I think Historic has a lot of the same problems that Standard does. 
with its top decks right now, like this Sultai deck we're currently playing against, but there's also a little bit wider range of decks that are competitive and historic because of, um, or that are playable because of the deeper card pool, so you hit the problems a little bit less often than you do in Standard is the saving grace. Hydro Farmer, thanks for the quarter of a year. Kind of refuel the Bezo Bucks pipeline. Thanks for the Bezo Bucks. I should really use that emoticon more often. It's real good. So I can claim Uro, but I, I don't have anything to sacrifice it with, Chad's the issue. What do we think of Archfiend's Vessel, Cut My Vessel, Cast Vessel, Fame the 5-5, five, five, Crack them for 7, and then we can burn them out next turn with Ribbons? I think that's the line. Because Uro, Uro puts them, cut my vessel into pieces, this is my last resort, claim to fame now, my demon, gonna cut the Uro into pieces, this is my last resort. Sometimes my improv doesn't suck, chat. Sometimes, sometimes my improv doesn't suck. Hey, Wargy, thanks for the entire year. I appreciate that. My ears, yet also why I sub. God bless. I've got a good, clean nine pieces of mana here for my ribbons. Yep. No blocks. Great. Hey, droid creases. Hey, Charles. Thanks for the tip. I appreciate that. For blue-black rogues in standard once Zendigar comes out. Sounds fantastic. Thanks for the support. God bless us, everyone. I'm still not 100% how we're supposed to be boarding this matchup. It's definitely extra claim in. Uh, definitely Dreadhorde Butcher. I think Bedevil's supposed to be there. Thoughtseize is great. I, I think it's an Innocent Blood cut out matchup. I, I The one thing I'm not sure on, I'm pretty sure I don't cling because clinging Uro doesn't is bad. It's just bad value. Like, you get you get behind in games where you're clinging Uro a lot of the time. I think I want my last card to be Innocent Blood. Because sometimes claiming Uro, you need ways to sack it. So having a fifth way to do that sounds good. Innocent Blood also kills um, Gargoth, Gargoth or whatever it's called. The 6-6 six, six for 5 on occasion. Depending on the board state. Speaking of that donation for uh, Blue Black Rogues, build around submissions are open for standard for Zendikar. The uh, for, so the next Toglandia open is going to be standard on September nineteenth. Um, is going to be standard on September nineteenth, and the new set drops the Thursday before. So that Thursday Friday we'll do all standard before the standard open, and then we'll dip back into some historic if we have historic submissions after that. Uh, not not in a direct chain, Rad. No. Any deck you're especially excited to try with the new set? No, none as of yet. Okay, 
and we'll be on the play for the second game. Think with no discard spell and tap lands, that last one's a mulligan. I think we keep this. Just the aggro on the play plan. Uh, double DF DFC is double face card. Dual face card, double face card. Dual dual faced card. Who's got two thumbs and gets extinction evented? This guy right here. At least Knight won't get exiled. See if Butcher can show you why it's worth its slot here. Uh, it's been a requirement to sleeve your paper magic cards during tournament play for a long time. Long, long, long time. Uh, that being said, there will be uh, what they call checklist cards, where you have, like, it's basically an official proxy that you put into your deck. Maybe I should have just done this last turn. It's like doing this last turn is worse against Cry of the Canarium, though. The, the, the keeping it's worse against Double Thought Seize, obviously. But I guess if they Double Thought Seize, I just, like, pump this up and smack them for six. And then they're at three. And this is a three-three. playing disfigure cycling sensor all right <laughs> all right sure you got me they have they have no thoughts to seize chat Greater Gargoth does. Does that? So they they have to trade for my knight here, right? Steal. It costs five jet.
Yeah, the way, the way the math works out, they have to gain three and trade with my knight, so... Now, Legion's End and Extinction Event, get them out of this game. Get them out of this situation. We might still be able to limp out the game if they draw either of those, but... Could have famed, but whatever. No, I, I couldn't fame because they needed to trade with my knight. I needed to give knight death touch to facilitate that. It's a good one to um, Yeah, I like... There... There's a lot of variations of this red-black Pyromancer, Dreadhorde, Arcanist, Archetype out there. And, um... If you fame your 3-3 Butcher, they die, they have to block it. No, they... They, they, they lit literally don't, Haba Hut. Their card gains 3 life. If I claim my Butcher, I have seven total power worth of Butchers attacking. My opponent at five blocks my Knight, goes to eight, takes a hit from the Butchers, goes to one, and then they still have a Gargoth in play. They might still be dead in spite of that, but I think taking the Gargoth off the table is the objectively correct line. Okay, that aside... I like this build specifically of Red Black Pyromancer a lot. I think uh, Knight and Dreadhorde Butcher being not explicitly graveyard-centric threats give this deck a nice angle to attack from. Um, graveyard Hate does still hurt us a bit and you want ways to interact with things like Cage, but these cards at least let you play a game of Magic when Cage is out. These cards are also more aggressive then something like Croxa and Stitcher Supplier, like a lot of the builds play. So I think these two cards specifically having access to them gives us better game against the control and the ramp decks in the format where it's really on us to be the beat down. So this is definitely my recommended variation of this archetype. We didn't change a single card throughout the course of the set. We, we were pretty happy with this last time and I remained happy with it again today. This uh, exact 75 is going to go up on my website uh, probably tonight or tomorrow night whenever I get some time to do that. Uh, at any rate, we're not done with magic yet for today. We got a ton more stream and magic in general coming up. We're going to wrap up our historic segment today, playing some more treasure flare. Sweet memes are made of these chat. I'm going to hit a quick ad roll. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with this. If you haven't seen it before, it's a real treat. 